Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Pleasure to be here with you on this amazing journey we call life and really what's beyond the veil and this place we call reality. I'm excited for today's show because Maria, ah, there I am in stereo. And I am excited about this episode. So just in case you didn't get it the first time, I truly am. Mar Maria Martinez is here today, and she's going to be talking about acquiring divine wealth. Truly, it is your right and my right. Maria is going to guide us to awaken unshakable confidence and your infinite abundance. And she's a profound healer. Uh, she's a secret weapon of mine. And I'm extremely excited to introduce you to her. Dare to Dream podcast won the Coalition for Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to, is also listed in Apple Podcast as one of the top self-improvement podcasts nominated for two people's choice podcast awards and for a webby award this show is sponsored by dr dane here and access consciousness they do energy work out into the world and if you would like to join one of their classes or become a facilitator go to dr dane here h-e-e-r.com or accessconsciousness.com i'm debbie dashinger and i teach spiritual messengers three things around visibility and media the first is I'm a book writing coach. How can you finally write that book and get it to completion and publish and write a highly engaging page turner book? That's my wheelhouse. And I love helping people there. I also have a company that takes your book once completed to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And the third piece is I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. So if you're ready for visibility, if you're ready for your message and your being to be seen and heard and to exponentially get your business out there, I've got a free gift for you. So you can learn how it's templates, it's videos and great guidance. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H. I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. Let me guide you how to become more visible and use books and interviews to get there. Maria Martinez is here today and she uses her healing ability to clear the way so you can access your divine inheritance and wealth. Maria specializes in helping entrepreneurs grow their revenue, create systems, as well as business coaching, corporate counseling, consulting, business lending, marketing, and brand strategy. She is credentialed in a myriad of spiritual protocols, business universities, and board certifications. An ancient soul, Maria is here to usher humanity into their awakening. As part of the Galactic Council, Maria weaves galaxies together for balance, protection, and empowerment as she welcomes light travelers, star seeds, healers, indigo, crystal, and rainbow children to awaken their genius and fulfill their soul's mission. If you would like to find out more about her, go find Maria at 360prosperity.com. That's 360prosperity.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Maria Martinez to Dare to Dream. It's so Hello. great to have you. Hello, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and thank you for inviting me. It's such a wonderful opportunity to yeah. share. You're like my secret weapon, you know? <laughs> and that's a terrible word to use because you're not even a weapon. <laughs> but let's say you're like a weapon against any dark forces or any aberrations, um, anything that I haven't really wanted inside of me. I mean, you've helped me tremendously. And you're like this incredibly gentle force which I haven't experienced very much out in the healing work. You know, a lot of people have very big personalities and take up a lot of oxygen in the room, but you've got this beautiful, gentle, peaceful way, but really powerful. <laughs> do you have, do you experience yourself the same way? I, 
I do. And it's a beautiful place for me to go in to bring everybody in. It's this beautiful place of co-creation uh, where we're heart center and we're in the place of surrender and allowing. Coming into that place of that zero point energy when we can just allow and be and receive. And it's beautiful. Mm. So give us an introduction. What can we expect when people work with you and you're going to work with us collectively today? You're going to be doing some healings. Talk mm -hmm. about what some of your specialties are. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, what I hear... Um, other people describe me as is healer to the healers. Um, mm. I do work with a lot of healers. I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs. Um, I work with people that are really on a mission to create an impact. And I support them in many different ways, you know, because I work at the multidimensional level. So we work at the core, the root, which is connection with self, and then whatever other layers are there for them to really embody all that they are, which is, you know, health and vitality, uh, abundance and prosperity, their soul's mission, their purpose, their passion, and love. So what I enjoy doing is helping people really connect to the truth of who they are. When we talk about mm -hmm. healing, that's where the healing is found. You know, when you really connect to the truth of who you are, you're able to unlock your own healing, you're able to unlock your own potential, you're, you're able to unlock your own possibilities. And you also step into the, the space of sovereignty, accessing your own power, accessing, you know, confidence and certainty, which when you're in that space, there is no room for fear. Although we experience fear, you, you just have a different relationship with it. Um, so other 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 areas, and this this is something that I've been doing for a very long time. It's the clearing of entities and interferences. I actually been doing that. You know, I, I don't know since I was a child, and it's part of uh, my soul's mission because in order for us to truly own our power, it's freedom, right? And in order for us to step into freedom, is to be free of all, and when we talk about when we talk about that or we look at what are what is the entities or what are entities and how do they Im impact us that's the separation from source that's the separation mm. from ourselves when we can acknowledge see choose to come back to ourselves then we're already stepping forward into alignment into the light and then we're able to see what is not of the light and sometimes that it, that energy or that darkness is ourselves. So we learn to embrace that part of ourselves and bring light to that. And, and some of it is outside, you know, other interferences that are not of this world, not of this dimension. Not of this world, that's cool. What mm -hmm. do you mean like entities from other planets or? Right, um, so aliens, um, a, a myriad of different entities. Um, and then other things that we, we find like um, uh, AI, synthetics, um, nanotechnology, uh, interferences with our DNA. So there is a, there are a lot of things out there that often get in the way of us fully expressing who we are. And when we can see that and we, we can acknowledge it and remove or release that out of our, out of our field, then we're able to really allow ourselves to connect to the light and also hold the light and, and raise our vibration. So when people refer to raising the vibration, really what it is, is we are holding the light for a longer period of time. So we're holding joy, mm -hmm. we're holding happiness, we're holding um, gratitude. So when we hold it, then we're raising ourselves to that new level, that new morphic view. Got it. When, when you talk about our mission. And I know this is a really important question that mm -hmm. probably a lot of people have. Most people have, why am I here? What is mm -hmm. my path? What am I supposed to be doing? What is it you see? Is it like you see a career? Is it you see a, a soul desire or a soul choice? What, like, how mm -hmm. is that for you to mm -hmm. perceive? That's a really good question. And it's really all of that. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, because some of us have the mission of helping humanity in a way of healing. Some of us have the mission of helping humanity in uh, education. Some of us have the, the mission of helping humanity in um, uncovering new technology. So when we talk about soul's purpose, that's one thing we're talking about, what is the soul here to do? And then, and then how that's expressed. So they're actually two different things. So the expression is what you choose, how you choose to express it. So for instance, if your soul's purpose is to empower humanity, well, there's so many different ways that you can do that. And that's your choice that, you know, you choose what brings you joy and happiness. Some people are healers, some people are coaches, some people are speakers, some people are authors, some people are teachers. So there's so many different ways that you can express it. But when people ask me, and it's different for everybody. So when somebody asks me, what is my, what is my purpose? I usually get a list of things of, you know, things that they, I, so I get visions or I get pictures of, you know, I see you speaking in front of an audience. I see you um, sitting in a group with, with a group of people. I see you uh, guiding um, people to, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I get different pictures that give them an indication of options that they can choose from. And then they get to decide. Uh, when we start telling somebody what they're supposed to be doing, that's, you know, then you're kind of exerting your own, projecting your, yourself into the equation. So it's always choice. When they ask about their soul, uh, why, why was their soul, what is the purpose of this, their soul? And so that's a little bit different. When we look at the soul, the, the soul also has its own mission. But part of that is coming back to the light, remembering who they are, remembering, um, what they're here to do, you know, the lessons that they're here to learn, and also who they're here to impact, uh, meaning that they may be here to awaken others, it, they may be here to enlighten others, they may be here serving a contract with others. So, you know, there's so many answers to that. But again, when we're in, the, in front of the person, it always comes down to, you know, this is what your soul is expressing or is here to, to do. And then these are the ways that it can express it, and then they get to choose from that. I think that's so cool because so many people, you know, there's a lot of change right now for people with relationships and their relationship to job and work, money, how they're fulfilling their life, et cetera. And I think that's wonderful because even if somebody feels like they've been expressing themselves and their purpose up till now, if they connect with you, a lot of people have come to crossroads, right? Well, I've been mm -hmm. doing this for a long time and it's been mm -hmm. good, but I feel something else, but I don't know what that something else mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And I think that is incredible that they can have somebody like you to help guide mm -hmm. them at a juncture like that. Mm -hmm. And so there, that new choice can emerge and be simple, you know, a little easy to pursue. Yeah. And if I could add a little bit to that, yeah, a lot of times when people say I've been expressing my, my purpose already, you know, if I believe this is my purpose and this is what I'm doing, then we get to look at, well, can you go bigger? You know, if, you know, how have you expressing that purpose? Are you ready for something more? And a lot of times that it's what they're ready for. And that's why they're feeling sort of a wall there. Like I've done what I can here. What else can I do? And And then it's an expansion of that. So Maybe it's um, bringing something else into the world, a new technology, uh, teaching something different, um, doing something innovative, um, expanding their work that they're doing and, or serving. This is often the case or serving a bigger, larger audience. Interesting. Yeah, I feel a lot. A resonance when you say that. And I feel like that's where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I am not certain by any means where I'm headed, but I know I'm headed. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been doing this thing and it's been, you know, my book coaching, my interview coaching. I love all of it. I, the show, like, forget it. You know, I, I get to hang mm -hmm. out with people like you. That's for me. It's everything. These conversations, masterclass, I wouldn't trade it. And yet you know, the soul wants what the soul wants. And then mm -hmm. music came along three years ago and that's been 
tremendously fulfilling to add to the mix. And now this shamanism, which been, which been knocking at my heart's door, and I've been like, what do I do with shamanism? <laughs> and I finally went, heck, I'm going to take this six-month class. I'm doing it. I'm committing. And I don't know where it's going to go. But mm -hmm. I, I'm open to at least the energy, following the energy of what feels like the next right piece and however that wants to be woven into my life. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And, and oftentimes your soul will guide you to what's next. Um, an opportunity shows up, something that you thought about, or it will show up three times like it does for me. So your soul will guide you into what's next. And even if you're not ready, it'll you know keep showing you, keep showing you until you say yes. <laughs> That's really true. That's really true. And so with you, I mean, I love that you, that you're spiritual and you talk about wealth and affluence. That's mm -hmm. so yummy because if anyone deserves that, I mean, everyone does, right? You talk about inheritance, but if anyone deserves that, it's spiritual people, you know, and often that's not the case. So why did affluence and abundance become your expertise? What was it about that, that was for you the right fit? Mm, yeah, thank you for asking that. So, you know, a lot of the times what we, we teach is our part of our experience. So mm -hmm. when, when I ventured out uh, from college, I actually did very well. And then, you know, if we all go through our, our learnings and lessons. And then I realized hey, money is not, you know, it's not my friend. Um, and I saw the consequence of that. So I started looking at that. I started looking at, and then I started hearing about more, like I started paying attention with other people, their relationship, their belief systems. And I saw this whole pattern of just illusion and mind lines that, we, that were playing out in our lives, um, you know, money blocks, uh, money stories, so I became very, I became very interested. One, you know, because I wanted to create my own breakthrough, and two, I felt like exactly what you said. We should all be able to access this. It should be available to everybody, and it shouldn't be based on, you know, your your credentials. It shouldn't be based on, you know, what what you, what you're born into. It shouldn't be based on really anything. So I really started paying attention to that and I started really working through all of that, learning more about it. And what I found through, you know, through all of this and, and my own experience was that, that, you know, what I was referring to earlier is that separation from ourselves. Abundance is already part of who we are. Abundance, money, money being energy, uh, it's already part of who we are. But because we adopted or we took on, we the projections of others, we decided that they were our truth, we separated from that as well. And we adopted, we have to work hard, we have to effort, then we have to prove ourselves and all of these stories that we had, all these belief systems that it just created a bigger wedge and a bigger wedge and a bigger wedge and a bigger wedge with abundance and prosperity. So that was what for me was like, aha, uh -huh. you know, this is something that everybody needs help with. This is something that everybody should know. This is something that everybody should have access to. And that's where my focus started going into. It's like, why not? Why can't we all be millionaires? Why can't we all, you know, just have money flowing in from multiple sources or unexpected sources? So I started playing with the manifestation. I started playing with the magic of it. And, you know, and it just, it was, you know, it was available and it was happening. And then I started teaching it and it was just really amazing when you clear those belief systems and those stories and you can move into that alignment of having receiving self-worth and value and then realizing that you can choose your value realizing that you can choose your own self-worth and really aligning with that and embodying and embracing all of that and then you deciding why not you know why can i allow infinite sources of money why can I allow you know why not what why and then so stepping into the new set point meaning that from wherever we were stepping into the new set point of you know doubling your income tripling your income and so forth and so on and 
And then knowing that that was possible and working through the alchemy of that so that you can step into the new vibration, the new morphic field to release the set points, release the ceiling that you were under, release the story that you were living into, releasing, removing lack and scarcity and allowing abundance and affluence and prosperity and wealth to be the new frequencies that you operated under. I can't hear you. I get goosebumps sometimes when you talk like that. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really yummy. Like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't, <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> I really, you know, it sounds really beautiful. And I could feel the ease, mm -hmm. right? Money is freedom. Mm -hmm. Money creates ease. There's so much we can do with money. There's many other things in life that are important besides money. But I think it's a darn good thing to have since we have to trade with it so much to get what we would like. So do we all have wealth codes? Talk, talk about what, what that yeah, is. What that absolutely. Is. Yes, we all, we all have them. So the codes come from creation. We are creation. We were created as the extension, the reflection of source universe. So all of these codes already exist, exist with that, within us, but either they are not being activated, they're not being used, they're not being acknowledged. And the activations that I often do are to awaken that abundance that it's already there. So we turn on the code of wealth, which allows you to attract abundance easier, which allows you to move into certainty easier and allows you to trust the universe. So when you activate those codes, you're, you're, it's like you're turning on the faucet. You're allowing that abundance uh, to just flow through your body and be activated in your DNA. And when that happens, there's a sense of joy. There's a sense of freedom. There's a sense of certainty. Certainty. There's a sense of trust that you move into. Mm. And if you continue to practice that, you know, it, 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 when you activate the codes, it moves you into that space. But if you continue to practice being in abundance, if you continue to practice being in flow, then that faucet keeps, you know, just running, running, becomes this beautiful waterfall that just continuously, uh, it's infinite. It doesn't have an endpoint. It doesn't have a shut up. So Maria, what do you see? I know it's impossible because <laughs> I get it because- you know, the way I process when sometimes when people ask me questions like, can, you know, can you give me a reading? And my my stuff doesn't work like that. Just doesn't. I get what I get when I, I it's supposed to be whatever I get. And I get it like downloads, like complete for showa. I know with certainty when I receive mm -hmm. information about locations, about people, about situations, so much, right? Uh, so that said, let me ask, and to the best of your ability, is it like when you perceive somebody or work with somebody, is it like it's a computer and you can see the coding, the programming, and what is aberrant and what needs to be changed in there? Or what is it that you see with wealth coding? Yeah. When it comes to wealth, and really when it comes to a reading, because you asked about a reading, the way I see the information, it's I hear the thoughts, I see the images, mm -hmm. uh, I see the energy, um, I see the story. So, you know, when I tune into somebody and we're looking at, well, what's, you know, what's really in the way of you having X amount of dollars? We look at the gap between the person and having. So we look at, you know, what's in the gap. Then I look at the relationship with money and that it usually shows me the way they feel about money. So if they feel like money is a burden, if they feel that money is not available for them, if they see money as, um, as anger, frustration, sometimes so that's the relationship they have with it. And sometimes they don't realize that. Hmm. Or if money brings pain, because if they experience pain in their childhood um, with divorce, parents getting divorced or loss of job or loss of, um, you know, ventures, then at some time they have that pain attached to money. So even though they want it, they're unable to bring it in because of what's there connected to the energy of money. So it shows me what's there. And when we're working with the codes, they often come, they actually look 
well, they, they either look like color, a frequency, they look like um, symbols, uh, they may look like um, a, a series of numbers um, that are being activated within the field. And it's different for everybody. It's not always the same, um, but it can show up in any different way. Um, but what's important to note is that the information always comes through uh, of what is needed for the individual to move forward, what is needed for individual to break through where, whatever that block is, that, that belief. Sometimes I see the thoughts floating in the mind, um, you know, the, the thoughts that are, uh, that they're playing out in their mind about money, their story, creating, having, receiving uh, their self-worth, their value. So it's, it's very interesting the way the information comes in. Um, and the other times I feel like I feel a block in their heart space. So the block in the heart space may be blocking their channel to receive. It may be creating like a barrier for them to receive money. And sometimes the block is related to unworthiness and deservingness or some other kind of rejection or abandonment that they have connected to themselves, but is showing up as unworthiness. So it blocks money from coming in. So we release those blocks and barriers that are there. And then we go down into the cellular level and down into the DNA. And then we start, we create a different space. So we clear sort of the heaviness and then we go into a different space of love, of self-compassion to really allow them to connect to their true abundance, which is unconditional love. And when they're there, then we can activate the codes, then we can activate the abundant flow that is within them. And then that closes that gap with where they are and where they want to be. Mm -mm -mm. Well, let's give everybody an experience uh, as a pretty good way to start this off. And I want to turn this over to you. If you would take us through a healing journey, something to raise our vibration, frequency of um, infinite abundance, prosperity, wealth, all of that. If you would if you would assist us right now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so not sure how much time we have, but sometimes they go a little bit long. So we'll see what we have. As much um, as you like. Okay, so let's begin. We wanna begin by coming into the space of letting go. And letting go is a space of surrender. It's the space where you're not thinking, you're just mm -hmm. allowing yourself to receive. And makes it easy when we close our eyes. So I'm just going to ask everybody to close their eyes. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. And as you're breathing in, you're bringing in light. You're bringing in source energy. And as you exhale, you're releasing the heaviness. You want to allow yourself to come into that space in your heart. Where you can receive. So continue to breathe as you move down into your heart space. And as you're in your heart space, I also want to have you bring your attention to the center of your head. Now we move into the center of the head so that you can feel the mastery within you. So you can feel the ownership. So you can be the director, the, the one in control in charge of your process. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. we're going to go ahead and release the heaviness in the throat and heart space. So these, again, are the receiving channels. We want to be in integrity with what we are ready to receive. So we want to go ahead and release what's there. Okay, beautiful. And I'm just following the guidance. I'm tuning in to the listeners now, the listeners that are, are going to listen to the replay. And this is a beautiful process because often what doesn't allow us to access 
wealth and prosperity is the part of us in our childhood that is wounded. So go ahead and take a deep breath. And as you're breathing, go ahead and scan your own life from this moment all the way to the time you were born. And notice what part of you, what age or age group stands out. You may even experience the trauma connected to money, prosperity, or the trauma around you that your parents experience. You may experience or know, or you may be observing the emotions you were running as a child, feeling stress, feeling anxious, feeling lack, feeling unworthy and deserving, feeling unsupported. So we want to invite that part of you or those parts of you to come forward to be with you here now. And while they're here with you, go ahead and choose a number. So we're gonna upgrade your ceiling. We wanna remove your ceiling, your income set points. So wherever you are, Go ahead and choose a higher number. So if, you, if you're making six figures, you can choose multiple six figures or you can choose seven figures, whatever that is for you. You can double, triple it, quadruple it. Go ahead and declare it. So you wanna see the number in big letters surrounded by lots of light as if there were lots of fireworks around it. And as you see it, notice how you feel. Notice if your throat is closing up. Notice if you're starting to feel heavy in your heart or tight in your heart. Notice what you're hearing in the center of your head if you're, if you're hearing. That's not possible. How will you ever get there? So th this, what you're experiencing now is what gets in the way. Go ahead and take a look at or tune into the little ones that are there with you. And go ahead and notice, feel, perceive what they're feeling about this new number. And what I'm hearing is no way. How is that possible? How is that going to happen? We'd have to work really hard. How are we going to manage it or handle it? So these are the unconscious belief systems that are running in the group energy. And also fear. Fear is coming up. What if we lose it? Uh, what if... Something bad happens, so feeling unsafe around money. So we want to begin by deleting all of this. These are the non the non true. This these are the mind lines. This is the illusion of money that you're playing out. So we want to delete and uncreate all of this. You want to unravel all of this. We want to delete and uncreate all that is. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. Just allow all of this to leave your field. Paying attention to those areas in your body that felt tight and heavy and constricted. Continue to breathe and just allow the light to come into those spaces. Releasing all of that, letting go. Now, the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to bring in higher wisdom to those parts of you. 
So notice what stories they're running. I'm not allowed to have that. That's not for me. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I wouldn't know what to do with it. So go ahead and ask for the higher wisdom to come through. Bring in the higher wisdom and it, be, it may be different for all of you, but just notice what messages you're getting. As you're letting go, releasing. And we want to go into the nervous system as well. There's a lot of anxious, nervous energy connected to money and managing money and handling money. So we want to delete and then create that nervous energy. We want to calm the nervous system. There's also a level of fear that is underneath that nervous system. And this is connected to the failures. So this is either failures of your parents or you making money decisions, money choices, investments, uh, career choices, um, purchases that didn't work out so well, ventures that didn't work out so well. So there's money uh, or the failure connected to money stuck in your field and that's on the left side of you there's coming in like arrows so we want to go ahead and delete all of that again so that's that's obstructing your receiving through your throat and through your heart space so we're going to release delete and then create that and i hear lots of no's no no so so that tells me that some of you are afraid of opening up afraid of having and also afraid of experiencing the same kind of loss or the same kind of pain. So we're going to delete and create that, delete and create that. One more deep breath. Now go ahead and tune in again to your inner child, those parts of you that step forward for this healing. And really tune into what do they need to feel supported, to feel valued, to feel connection, to feel that they matter, to know that they're worthy, to know that they deserve. And I can also hear some of the chatter these are things that were said to you. These are things that you heard. These are things that were floating around your environment that you took on as your own. So we're going to delete and uncreate, delete and uncreate all of that. And go ahead and take one more deep breath. And you may notice that if you had five versions of you, maybe now you have three. What you're doing is you're offering them what they need. You're aging them up so that they feel resourceful, so that they feel like they can manage money, they can receive money, they can handle money, they're worthy of money. So for the ones that are still remaining, take another deep breath. and offer them what they need. And go ahead and offer them a stack of money. And the reason you wanna offer them a stack of money, it's because there's a part of you, the adult, that doesn't believe yet that you can have this, that is this easy for you to access more. So see the stack of money in your hands. You can make it any denomination, $100 bills, whatever feels comfortable for you, but a stack. And go ahead and hand it to your inner child or the many versions of you that are there.
And what I'm seeing now from your inner child is playing with the money, throwing it up in the air, letting it fall on, on that part of you. So now they're connected. They're connected to money. They see that it's easy to have. They see that they have permission to have it. They see that they're worthy of it. So go ahead and take another deep breath and go back to that amount that you chose earlier and see how you feel about it. You can even state it in your mind and see if you get a big yes. And if that feels really good to you, you can increase that number. Or if that number feels comfortable, go ahead and see that number coming to you. You wanna see it coming into your bank account. You wanna see it coming in to your wallet, to your investments. You can even see it in a room. You can walk into that room and see stacks and stacks and stacks of money or gold or gems, jewelry, whatever that is for you that helps you connect to that amount. I can feel that some of you are really comfortable with this. And for those of you that are not quite comfortable with this number, go ahead and take a deep breath. And notice what's happening or notice what feelings, thoughts you're having. I can hear the thoughts of what do I do now? What do I do now? When reality, you don't really have to do anything with it now. There's no pressure to do anything with the money. You can, please, you can simply enjoy it. So just go ahead and enjoy having it. So now I see the rest of you coming into that room. It actually looks like a spa, this beautiful spa place where you come in to relax and to meditate, where, you know, just lots of abundance and affluence in this room, beautiful paintings, beautiful statues, stacks and stacks of money, gold, gold bars. Now, I'm also feeling some of you going into the restriction or constriction of, of, well, this is not real. Go ahead and take a deep breath and go ahead and release that statement. Because you're creating your own abundance. You're creating your own vision, your own definition of abundance. So if this room doesn't feel comfortable for you, or it doesn't feel like, yeah, this is not my thing, go ahead and create your own. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. Go ahead and create that space of calm and ease and relaxation where you're surrounded by affluence and wealth and prosperity and abundance, where money supports you, money is your friend, money's there at your side for whatever you need. It doesn't mean you have to spend it now, but what for, for whatever you need. Go ahead and take a deep breath and really allow that to be so. Very good. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. Now go ahead and expand your own awareness of yourself. And what I like to do, expand into your multidimensional bodies. So it's your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, your spirit, your energy, your soul, your etheric self. And we want each part of you to really take this in. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And as you're expanding your awareness, you can expand your awareness of yourself, the true self, the light within. Go ahead and expand to you, to yourself as consciousness, as awareness as wisdom and you can you can maybe feel the expansion so you're becoming bigger than your body 
bigger than the room you're in, bigger than the building you're in, bigger than the city, bigger than the state, the country, the hemisphere, bigger than the planet. You're becoming one with the universe. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And as you're becoming one with the universe, you're really connecting to unity consciousness. You're connecting to infinite wisdom, to infinite intelligence. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. This is where the truth always can be found. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. So you're connecting to the truth of who you are. Who are you? You are divine creation. Go ahead and take a deep breath and feel creation around you. Feel the expansion of the universe around you. Feel the expansion of source. Feel the love of source for yourself around you. You may even see an image of you standing in front of source. Go ahead and take one more deep breath and source, maybe light, maybe in a, a beautiful silhouette of light, maybe two silhouettes of life, father, mother, cosmic mother, cosmic father, whatever that is for you, however you perceive that. See yourself in the presence of source, creation, universe, God. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And you may, may even feel that you're becoming lighter and lighter. You're noticing your brilliance. You're noticing perceiving yourself as pure light, pure source. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And in your awareness of yourself, you may even see, perceive the codes that are within you. From the crown all the way throughout your field. And if you look at yourself, you may see light, beautiful colors, and in areas where it feels dull, dark, dense, even gray. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. As you're in this space, you may also be hearing, noticing source speak to you. Divine creation. You may hear source or perceive source or no source speaking to you, connecting with you, expressing to you who you really are, your divine creation. You are divinely perfect. There are no gaps. Your light is bright. You are the expression of the universe. You are the reflection of source. You are the individuation of source, God, universe. Therefore, everything that is available, it's available within you. Some of you felt a big expansion in your heart. You're really receiving that. You're in the knowing. This is my truth. Beautiful. And in that knowing, I can see the light, all those areas where the codes were dull and dark, and I can see them lighting up as, you, as if you're awakening to your truth to your knowing, I am abundance, I am prosperity, I am creation, I am the abundance that flows within me that is source. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lots of light and energy, lots of beautiful colors, lots of symbols and codes, mm. and lots of light language. So this is the message that is being imprinted in you, that is being integrated into your field, that is being integrated into your soul of the remembering of who you are, activating the true abundance within you that is source. Go ahead and take a deep breath and just allow it all in. So you're allowing the source of your abundance with this, with it, you know, within you that is source, universe, creation. Allow you know, to expand within every level of your field, within every cell of your body all the way to the quantum level. Also, what's really interesting is that uh, several of your galactic team is coming in for you 
And it's really interesting because they're not coming in to do any activation, but they're coming in to honor you for being you and for remembering who you are and remembering that you have access to all that is within you. Lots of opening in the back of the heart. So releasing a lot of the heaviness, a lot of the density, releasing a lot of the old trauma that is there. So we're going to run that energy through your spine. Go ahead and take one more deep breath and just be in that space of receiving, the space of knowing, the space of activating your higher level of consciousness that is abundance, prosperity, creation, the power within you to manifest to create, to attract. One more deep breath. And uh, around you, money is energy. And that's the way I see it. And it comes in, in different colors, but often it comes in, in green. So around you, I see these kind of particles of this green energy that is money dancing around, dancing around, celebrating, celebrating this process with you, celebrating this activation with you, because they know that from here forward, they're going to be available to you. Money, money, the energy of money, which is also love, is also passion, is also pur purpose, is also uh passion and prosperity and abundance and wealth, all the beautiful things that bring you happiness and joy. Go ahead and take one more deep breath and just allow that to be so, allow that to be so, allow that to be so. Receive that. For some of you, your angel wings just came out. You just said, yes, yes, yes. This is what I truly honor. This is who I truly am. This is what's available to me and I claim it now. This is your divine right inheritance. You knowing that abundance is the basis of who you are, it's the particles that run through your body that are, you know, the, the particles that are creation within you that are in every cell of your body. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And I feel the energy, the vibration of all those particles in your cells. Beautiful, beautiful, lots of gold energy throughout your, your multidimensional bodies. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Your heart space just open even more from the front and the back. So we want to allow that beautiful energy that's coming through to expand. And it's, it's so powerful. It's so amazing because you're in the space of oneness, in the space with source. I am one with source. So let's go ahead and ground that, ground that into Mother Earth. I am one with source. I am one with myself. I am completely in line with who I am. I am completely aligned with abundance, the abundance that is my natural gift, my true nature, my divine inheritance. Abundance is who I am. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And go ahead and take another deep breath as you, as you bring in the little ones into the space. And allow them to, to play in this beautiful energy of creation, abundance, and flow, and prosperity. Beautiful. Now come back into your awareness. And as you're coming back, Express your gratitude for the healing, for the activation that you receive. Express your gratitude to source, be in the presence of source. And also, you know, ask for any other messages before you come back.
And when you're ready, you can come back to your awareness and go ahead and tune into the number again. And notice how easy it feels to have that. Notice the peace around that. And notice that your little ones are celebrating. They feel so free. Beautiful. And again, you can receive it and simply enjoy it. You don't have to spend it or, or do anything with it. Just receive it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is a practice that you can do over and over again to release your set points. You can choose a different number every time and go to the same process and continue to access more wealth and prosperity and manifest it in this 3D. Beautiful. So as we were anchoring into Mother Earth, we want to really anchor it into your space as well. We want to create the new foundation so that you are stepping into a new morphic field, this new state of consciousness that you just stepped into. So this new state of consciousness, this new morphic field is aligned with that number, with your new number. I see images of you sitting back and just, mm-hmm. This is wonderful. Just enjoying being in this new flow and this new level of abundance and affluence. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And when you're ready, yeah, you can open your eyes. <laughs> what a journey that was. That was just spectacular. So many parts of me are grateful to you <laughs> for that. That was really surprising. Um, and I was so grateful. You know, I brought in definitely, I had a very strong number uh, of a, my child come up mm -hmm. in the beginning. And then Maria, you brought up a little bit later on, there may be other aspects. And there was a really clear and so important aspect of me that came up 16 years old and she's about to embark out in the world. She knows no guidance mm -hmm. and she was lost. Boy, was she a street kid figuring everything out on her own. And so in that moment, when you said, give her what or him, you know, what they need, I was so there for that. And that was remarkable to show up like that for her. And then the whole, you know, transformation around the money. And I could feel in the degrees of allowing and accepting uh, and then seeing the joy that they had, the two aspects. It was actually eight years old and 16. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And the joy they felt with the money and the gold mm -hmm. and the expression of it was beautiful. Your light language, I've always been so moved by it how you're able to speak it and at the same time translate it. Like, you know exactly what you're saying and what's coming through you. I find that very advanced, um, pretty spectacular. And I can feel it here when you're speaking and sharing what's happening. That was, um, and taking us out to the galaxies and back. What a gift you just gave us. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. That's wonderful. Wonderful. So wonderful. I want to unpack a little bit for people, this idea of you um, being part of a galactic council. Can you share mm -hmm. what's your function? Where do you meet? What do the others look <laughs> like? Why were you chosen for that? What yeah. is that job, yeah. <laughs> so to speak, like for you? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the, it's the job of my spirit and my spirit is the one that goes out. So, so this, this galactic council is made up of beautiful divine beings. Some are from other planets. So, and some are, you know, some are, other people may be aware of them like Arcturians, Pleiadians. Um, some are just from other planets um, like Venus and Jupiter that are part of this council. And 
we meet in the astros. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I'm aware when I'm out there and I know what's, you know, what, what sort of what, what we're working through and the big uh, purpose or the big intention is what, what I talked about earlier about freedom and balance. Um, we, we hold the space for humanity to really step into their full potential. And to hold that space, we also notice what's interfering with that. And part of that work is, it's, it's protection, but it's also removal. It's, you know, removal of interferences. Um, um, it's sort of like, you know, like uh, patrolling, um, but not in, in that sense, meaning that we are aware of what and what who is coming into uh, earth and whether they have a good intention or not. Mm. And when they're interfering with humanity um, through DNA splicing or through interfering with technology or siphoning life forces, that's where, that's where, you know, my spirit comes in with all the other members of the collective uh, council. And they, that's how they help humanity by helping them be free of those interferences. Uh, and like I said, uh, many times I'm aware um, because I can see and I'm you know, kind of consciously aware of that. And other times I know, okay, this is what I was doing in the astral plane. You know, while I, while I was sleeping, this is what my spirit was doing because I have sort of memories, recollection of that, um, very vivid, vivid of what's happening or what we did. Um, so we don't really interfere with free will because that's not what, what we do. Um, so a lot of times when we're called to help, it's because, you know, humanity is asking for help. Um, so we come in and we help wherever, you know, it's needed. Um, and then the other part of that is like um, exploring. So exploring other galaxies, um, connecting to other beings of light that are also here to support not just Earth, but other planets. And it's it's like an exchange of um, wisdom and energy and knowledge uh, for the highest good to be used in the highest good. So do you go, do you up level each other? You people bring in mentoring and education from their different backgrounds, dimensions, and galaxies. And when you meet at this council in spirit, do do you learn from each other? Uh, you could say that you could say that we learn from each other because we're all introducing different information or different discoveries. Um, but uh, uh, the intention of those discoveries is really to um, hold peace, so to create peace um, mm -hmm. and compassion and kindness um, and uh, freedom. Uh, so it's 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 about recognizing the light in everybody else and their contributions and then honoring those contributions um, and then you know sharing in that contribution. <laughs> so by seven years old, you're already doing healing work. You're already out of your body. You're having experiences. You're traveling to different times, which is amazing, dimensions, galaxies, all of this. And I know it's normal for you to see your guides, to see angels, ascended masters, and all of that. And then at some point in your life, you learn Oh, you don't know this at this point, you suddenly learn, oh my goodness, I am from a long line of curanderas, curanderos, mm -hmm. and shaman. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your lineage. What is that all about? What did you discover? Yeah, it's, and that, that's interesting because, you know, I, and it was, I was younger than seven years old that I knew of this. And I really didn't know that I was different, or I didn't know that I was talking to spirit. Um, my angels, my guides showed up at different times. And I, I think even before seven, I was already doing healing work. I was traveling to time and space. And at first, it, you know, when I would tell my parents, they were like, oh, okay, okay. But then when as I got older and I continued to share with them what I was seeing, uh, probably around, I would say nine, maybe 10 years old, they realized that it wasn't a dream or 
that you I was had the gift, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whose lineage? <laughs> but the my but my mom wasn't surprised because mm. her father and her mother were very gifted as well. Wow! And um, my did father, it skip grand- over your mother to you? No, I didn't. <laughs> ah. Actually, um, there are several of my aunts. Oh, actually, my my aunt and my mom um, and a couple other, at least one other uncle that also have the gift, mm-hmm. but. I was the one that just naturally began to express it. Um, My mom had an experience when she was young, I think she was about 11 or 12, where my grandfather and and a couple were helping someone else. And there was uh, black magic, there was witchcraft involved. And in the middle of the night, the person, not the person they were helping, but the it was a couple. So the lady that came in the middle of the night, she was pulled out of her bed by invisible forces, dragged out into the patio, dragged out into, there was a soccer field next to where they lived. And then when they, and they were trying to, you know, they were trying to save her. And when she went over the fence, they, you know, they kind of lost her, but when they found her, she was dead. She had passed. This is this is kind of a not a nice story, um, but that really traumatized my mom. So when she found out that I had the gift, her, you know, she immediately went into protection and she said, "Don't tell anybody that you can do this. Don't tell anyone that this is what you can do." So I, you know, I just didn't tell anybody, but I can it, it continued. My early mentors were Mother Mary, you know, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel. Uh, Michael, Jesus, and several of my other guides. Um, and when when I was in in college, it was really interesting because I just had this kind of explosion of things happening. Um, so something triggered me, and my gifts got became more amplified. And I found myself not just in one dimension, but in multiple multiple dimensions at the same time. I was so, so going to ask that question. <laughs> and can you express what that is like? I've only heard one other person, and that was uh, Whitley Strieber, told a story about um, becoming conscious and suddenly, poof, I think he was in at five, least five to seven dimensions um, and lifetimes at once. And it was amazing um, that he was able to maintain all of that. What was it like for you? Yeah, so in that experience, it was a little bit um, confusing because I could see, you know, I can see just dark beings in one dimension and I was there and they were around me and I can see kind of being in the middle of nowhere in a dimension and feeling alone and like, how do I get out of here? And then being in another place where I can see some of my guides there. Hmm. Um, And so I wasn't afraid. I was just like, okay, this is what's going on here. So, and, and, and by the way, that happens often, and that happens when I'm working with somebody, you know, where we open up a bunch of different dimensions, because we, if we're working with the spirit, we go in and find the spirit, especially if the spirit is out of the body, or if we need to go and work with the soul, or, or if there are um, fragments of the spirit in different dimensions, or if we're working with different lifetimes. So multiple dimensions usually open up when I'm working with somebody. So it's not unusual for me. It was just at that time. I didn't really have a lot of um, processes um, and I didn't have a mentor, a, a physical mentor. That mm. I could guide me. So after that, I came back and, you know, I talked to my mom about it and she's like, okay, I guess we're going to do this. So then that's when I really you know, found out that my grandfather um, was a healer and, you know, uh, he, he came also from a generations of healers, um, grandparents, great grandparents, um, all the way through like the Aztec and Mayan tradition. Um, so it was really interesting to hear about that and to hear that even though, you know, even though when we talk about, you know, this, do you come from a lineage? Yes, you know, there is a lineage there, but you don't have to come from a lineage, right? You, you can just you know, gifts could just be activated because you express yourself in another lifetime and now you chose to do it in this lifetime. Mm. Um, for me, that was the case where my mother is gifted, though she's not expressing herself as a healer. 
uh, not in the way that I do. Um, right. My aunt is also very gifted. My grandfather was very gifted. He passed, but he's one of my guides that often comes in and, and does activations with me. Um, so it's my grandmother. And oh, cool. yeah, and um, yeah, and then learning this, this sort of my background, it, it, it made more sense. Um, and, and, and so it made more sense that, you know, there was this whole background about me. Um, and what what was interesting about understanding that is that that brought me closer together with my grandfather and my mm -hmm. grandmother. They were already showing me different things because uh, they were coming in through meditation and uh, my grandmother was showing me different herbs and she was taking me to different places. Um, my grandfather would come in um, after he had passed. And this, you know, this was when I was in my early 20s, and he would do healings on me. So, you know, it just all kind of, you know, made sense. And I was really grateful to hear, to know all of that, and to have the support, of course, um, and to know and honor that, you know, that there was so much knowledge and wisdom already in my DNA that I was. Uh, accessing and learning to access so there was the physical you know the physical trace and of course the you know from other lifetimes um, my ancestors and my other incarnations so it was mm. wonderful it's just uh, wonderful delicious and your shaman expression in the world have you drunk plant medicine have you ingested mm, different natural ways whatever psilocybin peyote ayahuasca, huachuma, et cetera, yahe. Yeah, I have not. And what's really interesting is that most of my activations and my journeys just happen mm -hmm. through meditation, um, whether I'm doing the meditations on my own, um, whether I'm in a guided meditation, they they just happen. Um, and and I, I believe it's because it's already in my DNA. And also mm -hmm. my grandparents have been coming in to activate a lot of that knowledge within me. Um, just a couple months ago, I, my grandmother came in and with a group of beautiful goddesses, beautiful women, and they did a beautiful activation. They even gave me a book of knowledge of the mystic Kabbalah, um, the, the wisdom. It was so beautiful and surprised, but um, intrigued and beautiful. Uh, so that, you know, uh, these activations and these journeys happen to me uh, naturally. And I, I think it's because uh, of that place that I go into, that place of consciousness of zero point energy, where I'm just allowing and surrendering to the highest good to happen. And I'm really open. You know, I'm really open to being my best self. I'm really open to um, activating more of myself, to add more value and create um, more impact in the world and facilitate uh, deeper levels of transformation. So I think that's part of the reason that they happen just naturally. And even one of my uh, my guides, uh, my animal guides, which is actually more of a sort of a, a deity, uh, in one of my journeys, the feather serpent came in. Oh, the, yeah, it's really interesting. So, um, and if I can remember her, her name, it's, or his name. It's uh, Quetzcoatl, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I was, I was, so the vision was that I was out with a group of people, none that I knew or I, in, in this conscious world. And we were out in nature and we were having this beautiful ceremony and that it came in and through the circle. So it found its way into the middle of the circle and it stopped right in front of me. And we had um, a, con a higher consciousness connection and activation. And then it moved around me and it stood behind me over my head. So it was really beautiful. And I felt this integration, I felt his presence and it was just really amazing. You know, uh, I just recently watched the Graham Hancock special. I don't recall, it's something like a six part series just released on Netflix, highly recommended about these um, ancient sites and what mm -hmm. has happened on this planet to wipe out civilizations and restart again. And this Quetzalcoatl uh, mm -hmm. serpent that you're talking about, he, I think in the very first part of the series, we get to see it engraved 
in various sites in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then he keeps bringing it back. He weaves it throughout what he talks about in the different civilizations because it appears in different civilizations and actually very, so ancient, but so advanced, these civilizations. And we see these different depictions of it. You might be interested in -hmm. checking that out. I read it down. (laughs) Definitely. And you know, this popped for me while you were saying this, Maria. So when I start my shaman program, uh, can I work with you? Do you have the ability to actually activate the shaman in me? Mm-hmm. I, I do. And um, that knowledge of the shaman, again, during my sessions that comes through in the healings, um, in the activations that that come through for the individual. And again, I, I, I truly believe that I create this space for the highest good. So we are able to access higher levels of wisdom, higher levels of knowledge, high frequencies to come in and create the space for what's next for that person. I think it's incredible what you're capable of. Uh, We talk about your expertise with wealth, but clearly there's so much more, right? I know you do relationships. I know you do health for people who have pretty serious conditions going on you've been able to access and heal some profound changes for folks in their health. Uh, There's a lot that you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And even though we tailored today and this interview to the abundance and wealth, which is so beautiful, you know, and so freeing for folks, um, there's a lot here. So one of the things you do is call our energy into a sacred space and We've got our higher self, we've got our divine team, they're supporting us. And then we've got you at the same time facilitating our healing. And since we're these multidimensional beings and have entanglements that it can attach to multiple bodies, how can we repair our multidimensional bodies back into wholeness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a good practice for that would be to First, recognize that you are a multidimensional being. Secondly, is to be able to separate them and to tune in. Uh, so I call that a scan. So scan your multidimensional bodies individually to see. And if you come into the space where you have no expectations, where you are truly in the space of surrender, you'll be able to perceive quite a bit in terms of what's Uh, sort of entangled or attached to each of the bodies Mm. and then also what the separation is so Mm. as an example when when I get the question asked um I've been doing or you know or the statement I've been doing this work for so long and x y and z hasn't happened yet Uh, and my body's still x y and z um so meaning they're not at the place that they want to be so when I look at their relationship with themselves and the relationship between their bodies, they're not in alignment. The spirit often leaves the body. And if there isn't a good relationship, it'll stay out. If the spirit stays out, then there's a vacancy. Mm. And that vacancy can be filled by other things, Mm. occupants, walk-ins, entities, uh, parasites, just different things. So for us to integrate on multidimensional bodies, we also want to cultivate that relationship with our spirit or soul or mental or emotional or physical bodies. The emotional body is the emotions. So we want to look at what emotion am I holding on to? Uh, Anger, regret, frustration, resentment, guilt, shame. And we want to work through that, release all of that. If it's the mental body, the mental, the mental body may have programs running. You're not good enough. Yeah. Who do you think you are? So the fraud, the, yeah, the imposter syndrome running, or um, you're not loved. So just, you want to notice those programs and you want to release those programs. You want to clear those programs. Or it may have programs of um, competition and blame and fault. It's somebody or victim. So we want to look at what, what they're running. If we're looking at the, the soul, the soul is connected to the physical body and the soul 
we want to look at the vibration or the vibrancy of the soul. If, if the spirit is not there, then the soul is not really activated because the soul and the spirit are connected. Again, the spirit can leave. The soul doesn't leave the body. The soul leaves in with your last breath. But the physical body fuels the, the soul. The soul needs the spirit to know that it needs to be activated. So again, there's this kind of connection and intertwine that happens or that that is taking place that if you don't address one body, then the other bodies suffer. So you want to address each body and then bring that relationship integration back into oneness, into wholeness. And that's how you can heal your individual bodies. And of course, the energetic body is your auric field, your chakras, your central channel, your higher line. So you want to look at your energetic body in those aspects and see what's attached, what's blocking them, and then clear that space and then bring in back love, bring in back self-acceptance, bring in forgiveness, bring in um, self-belief, self-trust. And all of these practices allow your bodies to come back into wholeness, come back in oneness, come back to integration. And you'll notice a difference in your health. You'll notice a difference in your energy. You'll notice a difference in your vitality. You'll notice a difference in your attractability. Because if you're, you're, you know, you're in that place of alignment, then your vibration is really beautiful. It's, you know, there's a lot of bright light energy. Uh, and your heart is also vibrating joy and vibrating happiness. It's expanded, it's flowing. And your physical body feels loved. It feels accepted. It's the vessel that holds the soul and the spirit. So just a lot of, you know, you, that beautiful energy and that beautiful integration and that beautiful cultivation of that relationship allows you to even become more actualized, fully actualized, you know, activating more gifts, um, allowing more abundance to flow. Um, it, you know, it creates or empowers or fuels your manifesting ability. Uh, even like having the Midas touch. The yeah. Midas touch. I love it. Yes. Full circle. So Maria Martinez, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? My future dreams and goals. Oh, that's a, a beautiful question. Um, you know, like many other people uh, that I share when, when they're looking at that cross point, for me is serving millions of people. For me is to uh, add more value to everybody that I'm working with and be able to serve millions and millions of people, empower them to really know, you know who they are, understand themselves and understand the power within, within them to create the reality. And for them to have that certainty, have the skills and the tools to create their extraordinary life and live a life of fulfillment and joy. That, that's, that, those are my wishes. That's my dream. Um, to be my best self. Um, and yeah, just to honor who I am and honor those around me. Yeah. What is a ritual or practice that you do every day that keeps you in this gorgeous space that you are as a being? Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, as soon as I wake up, I bring my hands to my heart space and I connect to loving kindness and compassion. And then I just allow that energy to expand throughout my field. And I sit with it for a while because sometimes it's hard for us to express compassion and loving kindness to ourselves. So I really like to give that to myself so that I can give that to others. Um, and also I, I allow that to expand so that my multidimensional bodies can also receive that, including my inner child. And I like to give it to you. And I just like to run through every age. I just, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> just you know, express the loving kindness. Um, and, and, that also allows me to be loving kindness for my children. So that's why I love that. And it also allows me to set the tone for the rest of the day, to be in gratitude, um, 
you know, to honor myself for who I am and the relationship that I have for myself, with myself, the, the divine being that it's expressing itself as Maria. And um, to be uh, the space of unconditional love for others. Uh, and, and as part of that, you know, throughout the day, I'll, you know, just kind of see where I am with loving kindness and compassion. Uh, so this is like the second step of the practice. I like to expand it to the whole world. It's very similar to what we did earlier, where it's expanding that space beyond your body, beyond the room, beyond the city, and so on and so on and so forth. So you're you're setting the intention that everybody around you, that you know, everybody around you, everybody you come in contact with, they may also have it, they may also receive it, that they may be open to it. Uh, so that's my practice, and it's a beautiful practice that brings me joy, allows me to stay in that space and also connect to the divine goddess because it's very nurturing, it's very loving, it's very uh, compassionate. Um, uh, it's also, um, it, it has this space also of abundance, you know, compassion and loving kindness are also energies of abundance. So it allows me to be in that place as well. It just fills me up and it just it puts me in the state of overflow. Nice. Well, I am tremendously grateful that divine timing, dimensions aligned, timeline, <laughs> that you are a part of my life and have influenced my being so much. Uh, your magnificence and goddesshood, and you serve, you already serve so deeply. So just know that uh, I'm deeply grateful for your presence in my life. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And so am I. Mm. And yes, I love this divine timing. It's perfect. And we were both ready. And I so appreciate you. Yeah. So for folks who want to find you 360 prosperity.com, is there any other place where they might find you? Uh, they can also find me uh, at uh, acceleratedgrowth.com. That's my marketing agency. So either one of those, they can also find me on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, any uh, any of the social media channels that they you know favor, they can connect with me. Excellent. I end today's show with this quote: "God has deposited love, joy, peace, grace." and all the blessings in your ATM account for your unlimited use. But the secret pin is prayer. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Subscribe, leave a comment, share this with somebody you know who will love this conversation. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Emmanuel Dagger, who's a widely recog recognized new leading voice, meaning he's young in all things mind, body, and spirit. He's a multi best selling author, teacher, founder of the healing technology, the core work method, Emmanuel's message of healing, personal transformation, and love resonates as he's quickly gained worldwide recognition for his unique healing gifts, wisdom, and humanitarian efforts on behalf of refugee women and children. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Remember, it is your divine inheritance to be wealthy, to be healthy, to be happy, and to heal all parts of who you are. Thank you for joining us today on Dare to Dream.